Emmanuel Ojuku, Provost Public Relations School Lafia, Police Public Relations School Lafia, and uh, retired Commissioner of Police. Good to have you on the program tonight. My pleasure to be here. Mohammed Ali is a security expert. He joined us from our Capital Network Center. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the program. Our Capital Network Center. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the program. It's my pleasure to be here. Martin Ali Umar retired, National Security Resource and Solutions Options Consultant, former intelligence officer, is joining us from Lagos. Welcome to Tuesday Live. Let's go to Joss with His Excellency. Your Excellency, as, as bitter as this is, as quite disturbing as this is, in all the scenarios you have, been, you have featured and you have rendered your voice, your line of thought, as first of all as the governor of Plateau State and also the chairman of the London State Governors Forum. And uh, let's begin by saying the very last uh, engagement was the forum's uh, meeting in Kaduna and a couple of resolutions were reached. Could you just maybe recap and what informed your line of decision? Could you just give us a recap? Thank you very much. Uh, once again, good evening, viewers. Uh, well, the, the meeting in Kaduna, the Northern Governors meeting in Kaduna, was informed first of all by the the, the activities that uh, happened during the answers. And I think uh, when we had the answers movement, and before even it escalated down to the to the north, we had to summon a meeting, an emergency meeting in Kaduna. Because uh, within the period, there were notices being given, some issuing notices and saying all the southerners should vacate the north and then the northerners should vacate from the south. And uh, that was what informed us to call a meet, an emergency meeting to address some of these issues before they get out of hand. But as we were having the meeting, we also uh, addressed the issues of the youth restiveness, the women, and also the the other issues about traditional rulers, the involvement of traditional rulers in addressing the security of the nation. And so part of that meeting was what uh, led to the formation of committees. And those committees were headed by, in some cases, the traditional rulers and some of them by governors. So, and then we gave a timeline. That was sometimes last year. We gave a timeline of uh, February for the next meeting, which was going to be two days. And this meeting was to collect uh, the of, uh, the reports from all the various committees and also within that time to address some of the turning issues, emerging issues at that time, uh, at this time again. Now this time it was now the issue of the the health men farmers uh, uh, problem that was now being a problem of uh, southerners, uh, a perceived problem of southern and northern Nigeria. So all those things were taken over by the meeting and then we address those uh, issues. And first of all, uh, part of the resolution was that first, we all agreed that we must put in measures in our various states together in synergy with traditional rulers to find ways of helping the federal government, working in synergy with the federal government in addressing some of these issues. The second aspect was also to use the role of traditional council effectively and also to address some of the fears of our Southern counterparts. And, and to work with in synergy with them so that there will be no misconception about some of the issues that were coming, utterances that were coming, both from traditional rulers, governors, and even uh, uh, leaders, respected uh, leaders. And so that way, we agreed that we must have a dialogue with some of them to understand that this country is our country. There would be no need for uh, ethnic profiling when it comes to crime. And uh, since criminals are found in every tribe, every tribe. And so when we do that, we come together and address holistically what are the crimes and also take the responsibilities as governors, as a government, where we think that it is our responsibility to address these issues. And part of the resolution also was the need because uh, abduction, abduction were already getting very rampant. At the time that we were deliberation, or doing deliberations, there were the students were already abducted in uh, in uh, in Niger, and so we are now trying to put measures 
And immediately after the meeting, of course, then the, the first the Kagara issue and then the Jangabe. And so we realized that in the north, these issues were going to be very, very prevalent. And so what we did was to put heads together and to assist the federal government also to see how to address and, and protect our children in all their, their schools. And uh, again, the issue of IDPs, because when we talk about the current crimes, what are we doing about those who are victims of those things? The victims of crisis, victims of ignorant crisis, victims of farmers headers crisis, and victims of sort banditry. So what are we doing about them? We need to get the census of all of them. And those people are also aggrieved people. If they are still in IDP camps, we must find ways of relocating them back to their abode because that, that way they will also feel free and feel happy as Nigerians. And then we consider the issue of intra-border uh, uh, movements because influx and then the porous nature of our border is allowing not only people move anyhow, but also allowing influx of arms and ammunition. You recall that we mentioned that if we gather or put our border properly, there will be no way people will be moving in and bringing arms of several kinds to people. It is when these arms are brought in, then you find different brands of crime, both banditry, uh, ignorant crisis, farmers, headsmen, the IPOP, and all militancy going on. All of them are doing it with arms. So you will see that a lot of arms, the influx of arms, must also be uh, be controlled. We mentioned also the actions of some vigilante groups. In some states, some vigilante groups feel they are above the law. And so what they do is extrajudicious killings. And so we agree that all states should handle their vigilantes. Where they are useful, they can work with the police and security organization in addressing, uh, in addressing crime. But where they take extrajudicial steps, then definitely they are condemned and would must provide the legal backing to protect such actions. And then our focus on agriculture and mining in the north. So we are moving back to agriculture and mining. So that in order to have that, we must have security in all our places. So to, in, to guarantee farming and mining, we must also guarantee that there is security for it. And that was why in the north, we accepted the NLTP, the, 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 the implementation of the NLTP, the National Livestock uh, Transformation Plan, which program, which of course we had a meeting last, last um, uh, we had a meeting uh, yesterday under the office of the vice president, and we all concluded on the final implementation of the NLTP. And uh, it's interesting for you to know that in that NLTP, 20 states applied for it, 20 out of 36 states. And it is because of the misconception. And with proper analysis, proper explanation, even many states will come in to embrace the NLTP. That would have been a part of the solution to some of these herdsmen, farmers uh, issue that we are talking about. So with good understanding, we say sensitization must go on, whilst those states that have applied for the NLTP should be given opportunity to start the implementation, the pilot schemes, so that it will address this issue of movements and we have completely a new way of life, uh, both for farmers and also for, for the herd, for the headmen. That will reduce the banditry. But at the end of the day, we also call on Mr. President to take firm action, very, very firm actions on some of this insecurity that is going on. I'm very happy I'm beginning to see uh, the firm actions that are taking place in, uh, in, uh, in, Zamfara, in Zamfara today. And if we have that firm actions taking over, I think it will be good for the North and not only for the north, for the all, all, all other parts of uh, the country. But also my appeal I have made and which I'm also going to make is that why we're also addressing the, 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 the release of those who are, who are now abducted. Let us also go back to those who are abducted and still are yearning for release. I talk specifically about the likes of Leah Sharubu. We've been doing that, especially in Plateau State, where they live, their parents are with me today, I think we must go back. If we take that action we are taking in Zafara, let us move the same action and bring back our girls. Excellency, I'm still on you. Uh, you have been very visible in your capacity as the chairman of the Northern State Governors Forum. And uh, precisely uh, on the 12th of 
December 2020, uh, a, a release attributed to you after the ugly incident of the attack in Kasina State, that is uh, Kankara precisely. Uh, you, 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 you totally condemned and described it as an unfortunate incident which is regrettable and intolerable. Now, one of the other very strong positions of the governor, not, uh, state governor's forum in your last resolution was the result to put more efforts in enhancing the security and safety of all schools within their domain and therefore urge the Nigerian security agencies to collaborate with the various state governments towards achieving this noble objective. As much as we know, it's a security thing that requires a lot of intelligence. Are you worried that despite all this, we are yet to hear that suspects have been engaged? Well, of course, yes, I would be, I'm very much worried. I'm very much worried about that. And uh, that was why when we had a meeting in Kaduna, first of all, we also appreciate as people in government that yes, there is also capacity problem for the, for, in, for the security. There's capacity problem because they've, they've laid out their problems before us. They said, look, the number is insufficient. We also need uh, more funding to buy equipments and uh, it was in, in addressing some of those problems that we all agreed to the idea of also uh, supplementing some of it. And the supplementary part of it is the issue of the community policy, which we all agreed and is well funded, is now being funded by the federal government. And in some of the states, we all agreed also at the Governor, Northern Governors Forum that we cannot drive away some vigilante groups. So in most of the states, the vigilante groups are also very useful. So even if we cannot increase the number that we have in security, in terms of intelligence gathering, let us also use some of these, train some of these vigilante groups and use them. And more so, in the past, people were building schools without even fencing. So we realized that, yes, it is now obvious that all governments will go back to the issue of fencing boarding schools and providing security for boarding, for, for, for boarding schools. You know, in our days, it was, we used to have soldiers. We used to have soldiers in every school, and that was, I think, introduced by President Obasanjo when he was uh, head of state. We used to have soldiers who were maintaining discipline and who were also overseeing uh, the insecurity in all the schools. So in addition to that, we must, uh, whether we like it or not, as governors, now we prepared to ensure that we fence all the boarding schools and also ensure that we have security for all boarding schools. Otherwise, we'll continue to have some of these kidnappings going on here and there. And then finally, we also hammered on the issue of prosecution, like you mentioned, that if people are not brought, uh, not brought to book, definitely it will be seen that people commit criminal criminality and they go away free. If we have them in some places, let us show evidence that they have been prosecuted and also they are jailed. They are, they, are, they are jailed. That way, it will serve as a deterrent to others who are involved in it. And we also uh, condemn the issue of uh, completely and every time negotiations, uh, negotiations, because we we advise on one kinetic yes and also non kinetic. Non kinetic in 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 in, in other crimes. Like, for instance, if you have a religious crisis, if you have famous had a problem, you may use non-kinetic approach. But in terms of banditry, definitely we must have more of a kinetic approach. Otherwise, they are, they are saying less. they do the kidnapping and they go away, and tomorrow they are released. But where are the people? We must have those people, those culprits. 